What's up guys, it's Matt from TDM Style here and welcome back to the channel for another hair product review and this week we are finally getting around to talking about the texturizing clay from Kiehl's. Alright, so Kiehl's as a brand is definitely more well known for all their skincare products. I mean, they have just an insane amount of skincare products for men and women. I am a big Kiehl's fan. My Basically, my entire skin routine for the past year and change has been all Kiehl's stuff. They just, it works very well for me. And when I was there one day, I was going to restock something, toner or whatever, I don't know. And I saw some hair products on the shelf. They had this clay, they had a gel in a tube, which gels, I don't care for gels. And one other thing, I think maybe it was a pomade or something, I don't really remember. Uh, but obviously, so I love clays, so the clay caught my eye. And, you know, I was talking to the guy who was working there, and he, I believe he said that they used to make hair products, and then they kind of discontinued them and stopped for some time, and now they've picked it back up again, and so here we are. So, I've actually had this in my collection for a long time now. I've been just meaning to get to this review for ever. Uh, so this is their texturizing clay. It says it is a medium hold with a matte finish, and the little blurb on the top of the product there says, formulated with Moroccan lava clay, our styling formula may be used to define, shape, and texturize hair with flexible, long-lasting hold. Infused with a woodsy blend of aromatic cedarwood, sandalwood, and eucaly eucalyptus essential oils. Our formula is easy to apply and rinses out clean. Bulks up body without the weight. That is a mouthful. So now that you have an idea of what this is supposed to be, let's get right in the review and we can talk about this packaging first. So this comes in this 1.75 ounce or 50 gram plastic tub. So it's brown on the bottom with a black lid and stick on labeling. And honestly, I think the packaging definitely leaves <laughs> much to be desired. Um, it just, it feels like cheap plastic. It doesn't, it, I don't, like the brown and black, I don't care for. And the the labeling just looked, I mean, it looks like a Kiehl's product. I mean, if you look at any of their other stuff, their uh, packaging and their labeling in general is very wordy. Um, they, they always have like these really long descriptions of what the product is and what it does for you. And they usually put the ingredients lists in like a couple of different languages. So there's just, it's full of text. So, I mean, if you're used to looking at Kiehl's stuff, you can tell that this is a Kiehl's product from the packaging, but honestly, I think this baby could use a little bit of work. Now, the smell, on the other hand, um, they, you know, it says on the jar, cedarwood, sandalwood, and eucalyptus. And that's pretty much exactly what it smells like. It is woodsy, it is light, it, you definitely get the cedar and sandalwood up front, and the eucalyptus is very minimal. It's very, very slightly minty. Um, where this gets a little bit weird for me, and I don't know if this is like a, a placebo effect or if it's like really happening or what, I really like the smell in the jar. But what I found is when I start emulsifying it in my hands and the product gets warmed up, the smell changes a little bit and it almost, to me, like becomes a little bit more sour, I guess is the word I would use. It's weird. I can't really describe it, but I, I like the scent more in the jar than I do once it's warmed up. But with all that being said, once you've got it worked into the hair, I don't smell it at all anymore. It is very light, and so it basically just disappears. Now, uh, briefly touching on the ingredients, this is a water-based clay, so we've got aqua in the first spot, then we've got Sarah Alba beeswax, and this is a, you know, salon-type lab product, so there are a number of common compounds in here um, that are very long and difficult to pronounce. Uh, so looking for stuff that we normally recognize, we've got hydrogenated castor oil, we've got that Moroccan lava clay that they talked about. Uh, yeah, and then there's, you know, they've got some oils in there, so they've got their um, eucalyptus oil. What is this? Amaris balsamifera bark oil, okay. Uh, peppermint oil, citrus oil. So, I mean, there is some good sounding stuff in there. Now, when I was scoping this out in the shop, um, first of all, I was pretty happy with the price. I think I paid 
$18 for this, or maybe even less. I think it might have even been $16. Um, so, I mean, for Kiel stuff is normally fairly expensive, so I was happy with that price point. Um, and, you know, I love Kiel's like, skin products so much that I expected this to be quite good. And the way that the guy described it to me in the store, he had like curlier hair than mine. His was shorter, but he said, oh yeah, I use it a lot. I really love it because it's like a really strong hold and it helps me manage my, my curls and stuff. So I was like, oh, sounds like it'd be right up my street. Is that really the case though? Let's find out. So when you get inside the jar, you will see this kind of creamy tan looking product and it does have these kind of little specks in there. It, it looks interesting. Um, it scoops out pretty easily and it certainly breaks down nice and creamy and smooth and you don't really feel any tack in the hands. However, where things start to get a little dicey for me is application. This shit is dry. I mean, dry girl, like, as soon as I start putting it into my hair, it feels like it's already like set. And so it, it's, it's tough to, it doesn't feel sticky per se, but it's so dry that it, it definitely has quite a bit of tug and pull. Um, the first scoop is manageable. Uh, but as you can see here, after the first scoop, it has like no hold still. So I definitely need more than one scoop. And the second scoop going in, just it just amplifies that dry, tuggy pulliness even more. Um, so, I, you know, it says on the lid, uh, easy to apply. <sighs> Not for me, girl. Now, as far as the texture and the finish are concerned, this is certainly a matte finish, um, as you would expect from a product that feels that fucking dry when you're applying it. And the texture is pretty good. It's a, it's a clay texture. All right, but now let's talk about the hold. So on the packaging, it says medium hold. Guy in the shop told me it was a strong hold for him, which I mean, his hair was a lot shorter than mine, so I could see how the hold would be stronger for him. But now, so that footage that you just saw of me styling was from earlier today. That was about 9.30 this morning. I styled it in and right now, now it is 2.25, so it's been just around the five hour mark and medium hold, girl, where? Bitch, where? I, I've only been filming for, let me, I've been filming for about 11 minutes now and I've had to fix it already like five times. Um, now, as you can see, it kept the volume in. I mean, it is very light in the hair, which so I certainly need to give it that. It's very lightweight. It's very easy to keep the volume in for sure, but I, I wouldn't call it a medium hold. I would call this like basically a light hold, maybe bordering medium, but I mean, if I like bend over to pick something up or just, you know, if there's any kind of breeze, it just flops right out and I've been having this weird issue where it doesn't want this half of my hair to stay together with the rest and so it's been kind of splitting in the middle like this which just looks fucking ridiculous so I have to keep like pushing it over and every time I restyle it it's still because it is so dry and because it does seem to plump the hair a little bit that gives me that kind of dry tangly ends feeling that I you know see that I that really don't like because it's just very uncomfortable and so with such a light hold I need to restyle it a lot because it keeps falling out of shape and every time I fucking restyle it my fingers get stuck at the ends and it just feels like it's ripping hairs out and it's just Ugh, it's just unpleasant man I mean it does it, it it does restyle fairly well I guess all things said and done it doesn't really feel like it's losing any hold or losing any volume or texture uh, regardless of how many times I have to adjust it. Um, but, you know, I for me, like, a, a light-holding products are only really good if I'm going for a very, like, kind of side-swoop, relaxed like, hairstyle. Not something with, like, big volume like this. Because, um, obviously, this, you, you want that to stay in place. And that ain't gonna happen with this clay. All right, so overall thoughts on the Kiehl's texturizing clay. Honestly, I'm disappointed, man. I, because I love their skin products so much and I think that they're quite good, um, I had really high expectations for this because I just figured, well, they're gonna have that same 
you know, level of quality and performance in their hair products that their skin products have. And for me, that is just not the case with this. Now, with that being said, it's certainly not bad. It's, you know, I, like I said, I for me, it's a light hold. So if you're in the market for a light holding clay, yeah, maybe give it a shot because the texture is good. It definitely does have a matte finish. It's very lightweight in the hair, as I mentioned, so it's easy to keep volume in. Um, but I, that's, I find that to be kind of like, a weird trade-off so it's like it's easy to keep volume in but there's no hold to keep that volume in place and the price is okay um you know under twenty dollars we'll say because i don't remember exactly what it was i think it was 16 or 18. oh who remembers between 16 and 18 dollars for uh 1.75 ounces of a fairly salon quality clay is a decent price but I, yeah, it's just, you know, I, I gave this several chances. I mean, you can, like, I've used a lot of it. Like, I, I kept, like, wanting to really like it. And so I kept trying it again and again in different, you know, hair lengths and different things. And it just doesn't fucking work for me. But, hey, whatever. Can't win them all, right? I could see that this might possibly work better for... Uh, those of you with finer or straighter hair, because it does have a little bit of that plumping effect. So, you know, for me, that leads to tangly, dry ends, but for somebody with finer, smoother hair, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm just gonna stick with their skin products and I will get my hair clays from elsewhere. So that wraps things up for today's review, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this and found it helpful. I've got lots more stuff coming up soon for 2019. We've got some exciting new products coming in. I've got Trent's TH1 on the way, which I'm super fucking stoked to try that out. Sounds great. Yeah, I think I'm going to be bringing back some old series, series, series of stuff that I haven't done in a while. Maybe we'll get some new hair compares. I'm looking to start exploring the kind of budget stuff. So we'll do, um, you know, some videos of like the cheaper products that you can find in drugstores. So I've got lots and lots of stuff coming your way. So if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all that content. And as always, thank you guys so much for coming by and watching. And we'll see you at the next one.